This is the second in a series of videos on introductory modelling. This one considers the flow of fluid through pipes in series. So let's consider what the steady state fluid flow rate might be down a pipe. Now the key thing here is we're looking at steady state, so we're going to ignore inertia effects, i.e. the acceleration of the fluid. When is the flow created? Well, if we have a different pressure at each end of a pipe, then that pressure will cause fluid to flow. We're going to assume that the flow can be measured in something like meters cubed per second, but more importantly, it's going to be proportional with a con or proportional on the pressure difference, that is, with a constant which depends on the dimensions of the pipe, the materials the pipe's made with, the roughness of the pipe. And the key thing is this assumption is good enough for a beginner's course, but it is relatively simplistic. So if you do a more advanced course, you will probably find that a more involved relationship is needed. In particular, we're now going to ask the question, what happens if we add more pipes in series? So we might have a model for a single pipe. What happens if there's lots of pipes arranged in series and possibly pipes of different sizes or different materials and different roughness? Let's start then with a single pipe. So here <coughs> we've got a schematic which shows there's a pressure P1 at one end of the pipe and a pressure P2 at the other end of the pipe. And when this, these two pressures are different, then you're going to get a steady flow rate F. What we're going to do is we're going to assume that this steady flow rate can be modelled approximately by this expression here. So you'll see we've got the difference in pressure on the left gives us some constant times the flow rate. Now, a small note, we're not going to worry too much about the units of these particular variables. What units are we measuring pressure in? What units are we measuring flow in? And therefore, what are the units of Kp? Because that's an unwanted distraction from the key points we're trying to make in these videos. Analogies then. What's the analogy between pipe flow and resistors? Well, you'll see that both talk about a flow rate. When we have an electrical resistor, we've got a flow of current. With this pipe, we've got a flow of fluid. In both cases, the total flow depends on an input, which could be a voltage for the electrical circuit or pressure difference for the um, pipe flow. Let's have a look at the two equations. And you'll see in both equations, on the left, we've got the input, could be the voltage, could be the pressure difference. Then on the right, we've got the flow rate, could be I or F, and some constant which essentially represents resistance linking the two. So both these systems are analogous. You can see they've got analogous models which represent them. So voltage is analogous to pressure difference. The current flow is analogous to the fluid flow. And the resistor, capital R, is analogous to the pipe resistance, which here I've called K subscript P. Let's look then at what happens if we have two pipes in series. Now, for simplicity here, I'm going to assume it's the same pipe and we're just going to double it in length. Let's see what happens then. We might well have a pressure P2 at this point here. So you've got this pipe on the left, pressure P1 on the far left, P2 on the right. Now, if we assume these two pipes are joined together, then that pressure P2 must be the pressure on the left of the right-hand pipe. And we'll put a pressure P3 on the right of the right-hand pipe. Now, having done that, I can now use my simple pipe model to write down a model for the flow between both of these pipes. So you'll see for the left-hand pipe, I've got this equation here, P1 minus P2 equals Kp times F. And for the right-hand pipe, I've got this model here. And I think I've put those, the, uh, I forgot that, yes, I've got that the right way around. P2 minus P3 equals Kp times F. Now, the key thing to note is this flow here must be the same as this flow here because these two pipes are connected in series and we're assuming we've got a steady flow. And therefore, this F here is the same as this F here. Consequently, 
I can now combine these two equations together. What I can do in simple terms is just add them and you'll see I get therefore P1 minus P3, so pressure at the left hand end minus pressure at the far right and here you see I get 2 kp into F. So the effective resistance has been doubled. So the resistance to flow is doubled and hence the flow rate is half what it would have been if I had just a single pipe. What are the analogies then between pipe flow and resistors? So again, both have got a flow rate, flow of current or fluid, and the total flow depends on the input, which is the voltage or the pressure difference. Let's look at the equations. You'll see for the electric circuit, I had a voltage supply. I added the two resistances in brackets and multiplied that with the current flow in order to get the model. So voltage equals the sum of the resistances times the current flow. What about these pipes with fluid? What did we get? I need to um, put my P2 in here to finish the diagram. We had the pressure difference between the two ends equals, in brackets, resistance of pipe 1 plus resistance of pipe 2 times the flow rate. You see exactly analogous expressions. So the two systems are analogous. Resistors in series are analogous to pipes in series. The voltage is analogous to the pressure difference, the current flow to the fluid flow, and the electrical resistance to the pipe resistance. So observations. When pipes are placed in series, the overall resistance to fluid flow increases, and so the flow reduces. Resistances in series add to give the total pipe resistance, and the, pipe of, the behavior of pipes in series is analogous to electrical resistors in series. Now a little remark at the bottom here, it's not particularly important but it might come in sometimes. We've treated uh, mostly pipes in this particular video but in fact if you had a restriction like a tap or an opening, something like that, then you can use an equivalent sort of relationship. You get a pressure drop as you go through a restriction and the flow through that restriction will be some constant um, times the pressure drop.